Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I am Jerry. Joining me on this segment, we've got James and Paul. Paul and James, whichever order, they're still the same dudes. Uh, so, we're doing a Remember the Name segment. Uh, Going to be talking about a... We always do a former player, talk about this. Sometimes people like to wax lyrical about the player. Sometimes people use it as an opportunity to just light into them, share some memories, uh, good or bad. Um, so, the player we have chosen uh, is currently 38 years old, so he's not a player for Everton anymore. Uh, but he's still kind of, uh, isn't he a club ambassador in some form, guys? Doesn't he still sort of do some work with the club in some fashion or not? Or am I imagining that shit? Yeah, they, they send him over to, like, Africa or something, don't they, for a week? Yeah. <laughs> yes, like, yes. Do you like when there's a sports page or event on? Like when, just, oh, yeah, just send Leon. Leon, <laughs> yeah. Leon will have like Leon fancies a few days away. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting a sun so, yeah. <laughs> so, so Paul has, has already said the dude's name. I always like to like give the stats and then say the name, and Paul's just like, "Screw your system, Jerry." That's what I say, you know. So, Leon Osman, 433 appearances for the guy, though, though for our club, which is 57 goals. Uh, he was with Everton from uh, year 2000, the year 2000. Why 2K? Everybody, uh, he was the year 2000 through the year 2016. Uh, for a short bit, he was on loan at Carlisle in 2002 and 2003, and then after that, on loan at Derby for uh, 2004. Uh, but for the most part, he was almost always uh, at Everton. Um, two international appearances for the guy, which uh, and five foot eight midfielder, uh, which I found was really interesting. Uh, so I just got done watching, <laughs> this has a point, I swear. I just got done watching a documentary on Netflix about Antoine Griezmann, where it was talking about how in France, he could not, he, he had tried out for like every team, every team, and every single one of them told him he's too small. All right. Whenever I think about players that are too small, I feel like Leon Osman at the tail end of his career, I watched him play and I thought, wow, he looks really he looks like he can't protect the ball very well. And it was very frustrating. Five foot eight. He's a little dude. But he's really skilled. Okay? And that's why I wish I'd have seen him more early on in his career. Because it seemed like late in his career, he would get the ball and try to like hold off defenders. And they would just literally slap through him and get it. And he was like just giving them the ball over and over again. Uh, it was a little frustrating. But we're talking about a player who was much better than the tail end of his career. Um, uh, he featured in every league match at the, near the end, though. In 2013-2014 for El Bob Martinez, he, he, every league match. I didn't realize he played in every single one, but he did. All right? And that was at the end. So let's talk about this guy uh, who seems like – because English football, I think you have to be stout. You have to be physically strong. Or very smart. And that's where I think Leon Osman was a smart player from what I gather. So I'm going to start with James because he's, it's his turn. And I think he's going to be a little more gentle than Paul. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> when you say gentle, is, I'm, I'm actually going to be very, very positive about Leon Osman. Oh, I, good. I so a, not, I not a, even gentle. Just, yeah. I was, I was actually a very big fan of Osman. I thought he was... Like you say, a very intelligent player. I thought mm -hmm. he got better. Like the best part of his career was, of course, the sort of middle spell when he had the likes of Mikel Arteta, Stephen Pienaar playing with him, and he could play one touch football. I think when he his first touch was great, his, his one touch passing was really good. But if he if he held onto the ball, like you say, for any long, and he was getting knocked off the ball. Yeah, I think if if he used. His, his intelligence was really good. I thought if he worked alongside the likes of Stephen Pienaar, I thought they interchanged really well, particularly with Leighton Baines on that left-hand side. And that was later on in his career. I thought that was actually the best spell of his career, that sort of 2012 to 14 spell. That's when he got in the England side as well. Mm. But, of course, his big weakness was his physicality. He was getting knocked off the ball far too easily. And I think once any element of that sort of goes as you age as well, I think... He was starting to struggle, and we saw less and less of him in the last two years of his career with us. But I do think he was a he was a really really good player. I don't think, like you say, I think he's a very polarizing figure. But for me, he was a good asset to our team, particularly at a time when 
we didn't have a lot of money and couldn't really upgrade. I thought we got more out of them than maybe we thought we could. Mm. I want to say one another positive thing about Leon before we unleash Paul. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, he seems like like really genuinely funny. He seems like the kind of person who would be good to have in the locker room. Someone who's just good energy, always joking around. He does seem like that. Uh, so, am, am I reading this well, wrong? <laughs> hey, do, you want me, do, you want, do you want me to go even further and take my bigging up of Leon Osman off the scale? I genuinely think in the 4 5 season when we, we finished 17th the year before, Rooney left, and then we got into the Champions League the year after. I thought that 4 5 season, he was brilliant for us, and I thought... In what was a very small squad, I thought he was the glue that held that dressing room together and helped us sort of rejuvenate the team and shock everybody by qualifying for the top four. Nice. I thought he was crucial in that. All right. So we've so built there you go. we've built up this sandcastle of, of Leon, this sand sculpture of Leon Osman. And here comes Paul, the, the kid on the beach, who's just going to knock it down. So, Paul... <laughs> give us, give us your Leon Osman sp- spiel. <laughs> um, I didn't like that. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't, re- I, I don't hate Osman. I don't even seriously dislike Osman. Osman was a player for me through. I am, I, you know, I, I watched him f- throughout his career. Basically, I, I've been at the Gladys Street since two thousand and three. He was one of those players that just frustrated the life out of me more than any other player because he would. I think if there was ever a micro, a, I can't microcosm. Is that the word? Like a microcosm. Yeah, microcosm. Microcosm of David Moyes' Everton. It was Leon Osman as a player. He was there for the entire stretch. He was a, a player who would, you know, would do well, and you know, you'd think, oh, m- m- come on, m- maybe we can make that final step up, and then just at the final hurdle, it would just something would always go wrong, type mm. thing. Yeah, um, with with Leon Osman, it's weird trying to articulate. He was a good player, but he was one of those players who I was desperate for us to just move on from. I think it's like, I don't want this to kind of just be our level. Where Osman's got his uses, but I want us to be at a point where we don't need a Leon Osman. That was my big frustration. And it's not fair. I, I took it out on him, personally, when it's not really, it, when, you know, it's not even personal he did. But it was one of those players where when he'd have a bad game, I would really, really hold it against him more than someone else. Because it was just my frustration with the club and with David Moyes and the way the team was set up more than anything. He, he would be the player who, for some reason, not just myself, I think a lot of other opponents would agree, he would kind of bear the brunt of that because he was kind of seen as a David Moyes favourite, the player who would just get picked even when he wasn't playing well and the player who Moyes kind of relied on a bit too much and put too much pressure on. I think a lot of people as well, it's got to be mentioned, haven't really kind of forgiven him for the 2009 FA Cup final where he was just... He was a trophy in that ter- game. Yeah, mm. a tro- biggest game of his career, biggest claim in the Cubs history for 20 years, homegrown player, Evertonian through and through. And of all the of all the players to just not turn up that day and to just really let the club down, him and Tony Hibbert, the two local guys. So I think there's an element of that. I think mm. a lot of fans kind of still hold that against him to that day it, it, because he was just really, really poor. But the thing about Osman is... I don't think he would... I think now a player like him wouldn't even get in most Premier League sides because I think the game has moved on as we were talking about, as it became more physical. I don't know if this is true, but I have read it and I've heard it. Apparently, Osman had a problem with it. The reason he was kind of so weak type of thing was apparently he's got an issue with his legs. Maybe like one leg is kind of like maybe longer than the other or stronger than the other, maybe something like that. So that's why he was kind of never quite looked like he had perfect balance type thing when he was on the ball. So it was very easy for him to get kind of knocked to the side type mm-hmm. thing. That's what I've read about that's him. So it's, it, yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's an absolute fact, but I, I have heard that off more than once, and I think I've read it in a few articles, that, you know, I, he is, there was a reason why he was kind of so weak. So even if he'd have built himself up really strong, because Sterling's not a big guy, but he's Sterling, and he doesn't get knocked off the ball anyway. As much as he used yeah, to. but he's got, some big, some... he's got some enormous legs, though, if you look at Sterling. He yeah, made, that's, I mean, what, that's what I mean. Yeah, 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 you're right. He's able to kind of build himself up, whereas Osmond kind of didn't really have that option. There was only so much Osmond could do. Interesting. Is but, it a muscle, a, muscle, a muscle issue, do you think, was maybe. it with Osmond? Like yeah, gaining uh, muscle? Yeah. Yeah, just he, he, he kind of just looked 
it's not a nice way. He kind of looked twerpish, didn't he? Even when he was like in his late twenties, he just never looked like he was very light. He, he was very lightweight. Yeah, he didn't fill out type of thing. Even as he got older, he never really filled out at all. Uh, so I think that that was against him. But yeah, I think a lot of my issue with Osman over the years was always kind of it was kind of just my frustration with David Moyes and the club kind of boiling over. I thought I take it out on Osman more than anybody because for me, Leon Osman represented David Moyes as Everton more than any other player. Good, but not. Not, not, not good, good enough. enough. For what I, I yeah, not yeah. good enough for what I wanted, for what I expect from the club. Yeah, he, he does okay, but he's not. You know, he's not a, a top. I think he's. Player. The, I think really. he's the type of player, Leon Osman. If nowadays when we had the money, if we had him sitting on the bench and coming on, we'd love him. Maybe, but yeah, but not. He's not a starting Good eleven point. player. I see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, he was, as again, he, I think he was just a victim of circumstances more than anything. He was the club had to over rely on him. And I think, as I said, it just a lot of for a lot of fans, I kind of just grated after a while because a lot of fans just have to come to the realization that it's never going to get any better than this the way things are until a new owner comes in, Leon Osman, and you know fifth and sixth place finishes, which we'd snatch your hands off for them now. But back then, fifth and six fans wanted more. Fans wanted top four. Fans wanted cup finals, and it just wasn't really going to happen. It should have happened. We had to play up. We had we did have players capable of making that step up but just the breaks didn't go for us did they so I think Osman I'll say fans I think Osman's just a player who a lot of fans took the frustration out of maybe sometimes rightly sometimes wrongly but I think a lot of the hatred Osman gets or just you know bad remarks people make about him it's just a frustration with that period of history of Everton's history more than it is any personal towards him do you think that I got a couple more questions do you think that uh, we tend to do that with local players, the idea where we kind of put them up on a little bit of a pedestal because they're local. We're like, yeah, we want them to do well, you know, because they're local. They come from where we come from. And then when it doesn't pan out, it's almost like that disappointment is amplified by the fact that we had such high hopes for them being from where we're from. You know what I mean? So I say we, it's really from where you're from, but I'm comparing that to other scenarios from where I'm from, you know, other sports scenarios. Uh, I feel like a lot of times, a lot of the local kids that come through really catch a, a ton of flack from supporters. Like I, I immediately jumped to, to Tom Davies, uh, you know, mm-hmm. but so do you, do we, do we feel like we're always fair to these folks or do we feel like, we're just calling it the way we Not see it. Not at all. It. You know what I mean? Not at all. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. And Everton fans aren't going to like to hear this. I think we all want a Steven Gerrard of our own. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is. I think that's what it boils down to. Or we want another Wayne Rooney who mm-hmm. stays, if you like. Ah, yeah. We want, we want someone to reach those heights again, but obviously stick around. And when Ross Barkley doesn't live up to the level of Wayne Rooney... We turn yeah. when Tom Davis doesn't live up to the level of Wayne Rooney or whoever, Stephen Gerrard, for instance. We turn, or in our case, turn. I was, I was thinking that same thing. <laughs> when you said that, I was like, somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to do it. Turn. <laughs> it's weird that I get that, but I do. It's <laughs> Everyone gets well, everyone. well, my silly American ass shouldn't get that because I'm never in a stadium. You know what I mean? But, no, um, but- I, re- I think Goodison Park's fantastic for that. You're, you could be watching it on the TV, and you Goodison's the best on the TV for you hit over here and fans the mics, saying those things. Those sideline mics are so great. It's my favourite to watch yeah. Goodison on those. What was it? You're rubbish, Martin Atkinson. You couldn't ref- referee a game of tiddlywinks. Yep, I remember that, that one. That was a personal, fa- personal favourite of mine. Effing disappear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Arlo White, whenever he's doing uh, that kind of the Goodison games, will actually say, "We apologize for those into in our audience uh, who might have heard some fruity language." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, "That's not the way they'd say it, but all right." Because <laughs> uh, if, if there's fruity language at, at Everton, Goodison Park's a fruit bowl. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so anyway, back to what we were talking about before, <laughs> before we started talking about Dan. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so that's that's the idea. The whole like treating treating the local guys the same. And I think you you make an interesting observation about how we want we want that next great player to to, to come and, and live up to expectations and stay. You know, yeah. um, 
So, Paul, did you have anything on that before I move on to this one last question? No, I, I agree with him completely. Everton fans want a local boy to kind of lift the club up and lead us to glory. We, he, he said it perfectly. We want a Steven Gerrard. We want a, we want a, a Michael Owen type thing. We want a Jamie Carragher. We want, they've had so many of them and we haven't had any. We only had Rooney and he, he left before we saw the best of him. Fans want that. They, they so badly want, we, we so badly want to love somebody. That a way. scouse hero. Yeah. So bad. But, we so badly want to love somebody that when you're not the person we want to love, we just we just hate you. I think that's what uh, the reason they get so much flat is because fans want to believe in them so badly. It kind of feels like it's not fair on the players at all. But this kind of mindset a lot of fans have, it's like you kind of let us down. We we had all these hopes for you and you can't live up to them. Well, a lot of these hopes kind of weren't realistic and weren't fair in the first place. So hopefully one day that player does come along. Hopefully he's not in the too he's, he, it's not in the too distant future and I mean, fans can. Chill out a little bit. Interestingly, from Paul, obviously you're very opinionated on Leon Osman. For me, Tom Davis is set to be the new Leon Osman in that context. I uh, maybe, but I, I, I don't. I, I think Tom Davis could be gone sooner rather than later. I don't I reckon. Maybe I'm wrong, but he's he's not anywhere near the team at the moment, is he? So true. Yeah, it wouldn't shock. It wouldn't shock me. If, maybe it'll only be a short term thing, but it wouldn't shock me if Tom Davis isn't with Everton next season or the, maybe the season after. I just want him to still hang around the club because I like the random pictures of him in the streets like skateboarding and stuff yeah he is <laughs> pretty I want Tom Davis for the same reason as that I wanted Tom Davis to stay at the same reason I wanted Leon Osmond to stay because of what he does for the dressing room mm. more than what he does on the pitch that's a good point it is uh, so last question on Leon Osmond uh, I mentioned the whole Griezmann thing early on because he ended up somebody recommended him for a tryout in Spain where being the biggest and fastest didn't matter it was more about technical ability and I was wondering if we feel like we would have seen I guess more out of Osman had he gone to a league where what he did better maybe would have been allowed to shine more rather than getting knocked off the ball as much in England. So it's something I was thinking about. I was like, I wonder how he would have done if he went to a league where that wasn't as physical. You know, something where his finesse and his vision would maybe be a little bit more appreciated. So I throw that out there just because I, I'm weird and I like hypotheticals. It's interesting, really. I think if he'd have gone to the likes of Spain or Portugal, mm -hmm. he would have done okay. I think particularly Portugal, you'd have probably seen him flourish because I think he's about at the level of maybe a Porto or a Benfica, Pat. certainly not at the level of a Real Madrid or a Barcelona right. where he would go and win titles. But as he maybe become more of a hero if he was went to somewhere that wins trophies, but is perhaps more at Everton's level. Yeah, or a, a, you know somewhere in Holland, like a PSV. Huh. Or yeah. Somewhere like that. Yeah, like well, I think if he'd have gone to another league. If it had been in like in a smaller country, I think I would leave that's kind of not more off the radar. A Portugal, a Holland, maybe, maybe a Belgium. Nice. I could see like a. Do you know, like with these, you know, they've got they've got that number one team that everyone knows, like an Anderlecht mm -hmm. or a Olympiacos or a, a PSV. Like it seems that are kind of respected on the continent, but you know they're not going to be challenging for European cups mm -hmm. or or signing any world class players. Where is if they've gone somewhere like in Italy or a. France or a maybe top level Spain, I think, kind of there would have, it wouldn't have made too much a difference because he'd have just be, he'd have had to contend with the likes of playing at Real Madrid or a PS, PSG or mm -hmm. something like that, wouldn't he? So yeah, I think Osman kind of had a niche, and and his niche maybe for most of his career wasn't at Everton. Well, you know, he's a local guy. He stayed. He gave it his best, and I do respect him for that. Yeah, uh, I think it's interesting. There are these players for for Everton that they, they just want to sort of, for the most part, just. Play as long as they, as they can and stay there. I find that very interesting. You know what I mean? That they have the opportunity to maybe go off and play again, play somewhere else. But they choose to just sort of retire after Everton. You know what I mean? I'm curious as to what Leighton Baines is going to do. Because he seems like somebody who's Ooh. very happy in the area. That's what it seems like anyway. He got, got linked with the Galaxy. A few he? times. Oh, a couple of times, yeah. 
so it's hard to say. Yeah, it's, I, I, I imagine he probably got offered a better deal with the Galaxy than he did to stay at Everton, but he must just, by all pretenses, he's a home bird. I'm he? just under the impression no. that MLS does not pay much. You know what I mean? Like, it, well, yeah, but there's, you know, there's, there's living in there's living in LA. Are you are you, are you insinuating that living in LA is better than living in Liverpool? Honestly, if I had a choice, I'd rather live in Liverpool. I'll just say it right now. But I live in North Carolina, so maybe I'm just not super impressed by LA. You could probably count on one hand the amount of people who'd say. I know, that. but I sorry. Look, at, living in Liverpool looks looks, you know, more interesting to me. It's all, it's all right. It's, it's very bad. different because LA is more. Um, surface, you know what I mean? You go into a bar and everybody's yeah. talking about their new project instead of have yeah. No offense to I, yeah. I'm, I, met, I know a lot of I know a lot of filmmakers out there who are genuinely awesome people. But I'm sorry, when I went to a bar in L.A., it was everywhere I turned, people were talking about their new project and bigging themselves up. And I'm sorry, Liverpool sounds like it'd be the opposite of that, cutting through. You go into a pub and it's. It's just You're people ask it. Do what? Jerry. You're a big Simpsons yes. fan? Oh, yeah. Uh, have you seen the, 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 oh, the radioactive uh-huh. man? Um, the, the episode where they make the radioactive man movie, the ending to that. Thank God we're back, Thank God we're back yes. in Hollywood where people treat each other the way. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying, Paul. That is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap up. We kind of, we always go everywhere. But uh, I think we've covered a lot of Leon Osman here. Okay, he's one of those players. Like when I first started watching him, he would have the occasional good game, pop up with a goal every once in a while, which I didn't know he had that in his locker at first when I first started watching the watching the club play. Um, But uh, he ended up frustrating me a lot. But at the same time, I was sitting there thinking, I haven't watched this much, and I'm betting that 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 supporters who have been watching for longer have a different opinion. So I I always try to tried to keep that in check, keep that in mind, if that makes sense. So, um, but yeah, Leon Osman, remember the name. That's, that's the segment. Yay. All right. So I guess that's it. No more, no more Leon. All right. Uh, so if you've been digging the videos, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. We sincerely appreciate it. If you want more Paul, find Paul on Twitter, uh, and on the Toffee Blues website where he's going to have some articles start dropping soon. And uh, as, as you remember, if you see Paul, engage him in boxing conversations or Skittles. Or Harry Bow. Or pro Harry Bow. Do you know what Harry Bow no, I'm Paul? pretty much certain you just made that up. Whoa. I was, no, I was no, kidding. No. <laughs> you said, whoa. We need, we, need, we need to bring Jerry over for an education. Harry Bow's and sausage rolls. Really? Okay. Yes. I'm down with that, whatever that means. I, I really hope that I didn't just introduce myself into some sort of back alley dealings. That <laughs> no, no, no. Harry Ball was very sugary sweet. Oh, okay. Bad for your teeth. Bad for oh. your teeth. And if you want, uh, if you want some James, keep an eye out for his segments uh, on the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. He's got some segments that drop every once in a while. Um, additionally, check out check him out on Twitter. Engage with him. He will, uh, he will respond. Uh, and also, remember, pat on the back. That's what we want from James. We don't want him choking. Just saying. All right, so that's it. If you want to pop on over to the podcast, we've got a quiz coming. Yeah, these guys, quiz time. So uh, if not, we'll miss you. You had me at hello, tear, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.